Tower Defense TD is a subgenre of strategy video game where the goal is to defend a player's territories or possessions by obstructing the enemy attackers, usually achieved by placing defensive structures on or along their path of attack. This typically means building a variety of different structures that serve to automatically block, impede, attack or destroy enemies. Tower Defense is seen as a subgenre of real-time strategy video games, due to its real-time origins, though many modern tower defense games include aspects of turn-based strategy. Strategic choice and positioning of defensive elements is an essential strategy of the genre. Ryan Clements of IGN attributes the popularity of such games to psychology and human vulnerability. Tower Defense, according to Clements plays off of our need for security, ownership, and a desire to protect the people closest to us", arising from a need to create intrinsic value through "...ownership over things", "...personal space", and to "...repel our fears and insecurities". History Topic precursors The tower defense genre can trace its lineage back to the golden age of arcade video games in the 1980s. The object of the arcade game Space Invaders released in 1978 was to defend the player's territory represented by the bottom of the screen against waves of incoming enemies. The game featured shields which could be used to strategically, to obstruct enemy attacks on the player and assist the player to defend their territory, though not specifically to protect the territory. The 1980 game Missile Command changed that by introducing a strategy element. In the game, players could obstruct incoming missiles, and there were multiple attack paths in each attack wave. Missile Command was also the first of its kind to make use of a pointing device, a trackball, enabling players to use a crosshair. The innovation was ahead of its time and anticipated the genre's later boom, which was paved by the wide adoption of the computer mouse. Additionally, in Missile Command, the sole target of the attackers is the base, not a specific player character. For these reasons, some regard it as the first true game in the genre, while later arcade games like Defender and Choplifter lacked the strategy element of Missile Command, they began a trend of games that shifted the primary objective to defending non-player items. In these games, defending non-players from waves of attackers is key to progressing. Parker Brothers' 1982 title Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back for the Atari 2600 was one of the first tie-ins to popularize the base defense style. The concept of waves of enemies attacking the base in single file in this case at ATs, proved a formula that was subsequently copied by many games as the shift from arcade to PC gaming began. Players were now able to choose from different methods of obstructing attackers' progress. Nintendo's popular 1980s game and watch handheld games featured many popular precursors. With their fixed sprite cells with binary states, games with waves of attackers following fixed paths were able to make use of the technical limitations of the platform yet proved simple and enjoyable to casual gamers. Vermin 1980, one of the first, had players with Defending the Garden a theme followed by many later games from Relentless Horde of Moles. The following years saw a flood of similar titles, including Manhole 1981, Parachute 1981, and Popeye 1981. 1982 saw multiple titles with the primary object of protecting buildings from burning, fire attack, oil panic and Mickey and Donald. The later titles utilized multiple articulating screens to increase the difficulty for players. With two screens these games introduced basic resource management e.g. oil and water, forcing players to multitask. Greenhouse 1982 was another popular two-screen game in which players use clouds of pesticide spray to protect flowers from waves of attacking insects. Despite the early rush of archetypal titles, ultimately there was a general decline in fixed-cell games, due to their the technical limitations, simplistic gameplay, and the rise of personal computers and handhelds the Game Boy. Correspondingly, this genre also declined. A rare exception was SafeBuster in which the player protects a safe from a thief trying to blow it up. By the mid-1980s, the strategy elements began to further evolve. Early PC gaming examples include the 1984 Commodore 64 titles Gandalf the Sorcerer, a shooter with tower defense elements, and Imagine Software's 1984 release Pedro. 
Pedro, a garden defense game, introduced new gameplay elements, including different enemy types as well as the ability to place fixed obstructions, and to build and repair the player's territory. <laughs> Modern genre emerges Rampart, released in 1990 is generally considered to have established the prototypical tower defense. Rampart introduced player-placed defenses that automatically attack incoming enemies. In addition, it has distinct phases of build, defend and repair. These are now staple gameplay elements of many games in the genre. It was also one of the first multiplayer video games of its kind. While Rampart was popular, similar games were rarely seen until the widespread adoption of the computer mouse on the PC. The DOS title Ambush at Sorinor 1993 was a rare exception from this era. Tower defense gameplay also made an appearance on consoles with several minigames in the Final Fantasy series, including a tower defense minigame in Final Fantasy VI 1994 and the Fort Condor minigame in Final Fantasy VII 1997, which was also one of the first to feature 3D graphics. Dungeon Keeper 1997 had players defend the Dungeon Heart, a gigantic gem at the center of your dungeon, which if destroyed, the player loses the game. A central theme of the 3D first-person shooter Turok 2, Seeds of Evil 1998 was to defend energy totems against hordes of attackers. As real-time strategy games gained popularity in PC gaming, many introduced tower defense modes in their gameplay, particularly in multiplayer modes. The 2006 maps Element Tower Defense Element TD and Gem Tower Defense released in February for the popular 3D RTS title Warcraft 3, Reign of Chaos almost single-handedly rekindled the genre. These titles would also bring role-playing elements to the genre for the first time. Topic: 2007-2008 boom. Between 2007 and 2008, the genre became a phenomenon, due in part to the popularity of the tower defense mode in real-time strategy games, but mainly due to the rise of Adobe Flash independent developers as well as the emergence of major smartphone app stores from Apple and Google. The first standalone browser games emerged in 2007. Among them were the extremely popular titles Flash Element Tower Defense released in January, Desktop Tower Defense released in March and Antbuster released in May. Desktop Tower Defense earned an Independent Games Festival Award, and its success led to a version created for the mobile phone by a different developer. Another significant Flash title released in 2008 was Gemcraft. Handheld game console were not ignored in the boom and titles included Locke's Quest and Ninjatown released in September and October respectively, with the arrival of Apple's App Store Tower Defense developers adapted quickly to the touchscreen interface and the titles were among the most downloaded, many of them ported directly from Flash. Among the more notable include Bloons TD4 2009, which sold more than a million copies on iOS. The genre's success also led to new releases on PC and video game consoles. Popular 2008 titles included Pixeljunk Monsters released in January, Defense Grid, The Awakening and Savage Moon in December. Gauntnet was released in April 2009. Plants vs. Zombies released in May 2009 was another highly popular tower defense which became a successful series on mobile devices. 2010. A new breed of 3D games By the end of the boom, most tower defense games were still stuck in the side-scrolling, isometric, or top-down perspective graphical medium. Iron Grip, Warlord, released in November, 2008 unsuccessfully pioneered the first-person perspective shooter with the genre. The awkward combination of experimental tower defense mechanics with 3D graphics was not well received, but later titles refined its execution paving the way for a popular new breed of games. Dungeon Defenders, released in October 2010, was one of the first tower defense games to bring the genre to the third-person perspective. It sold over 250,000 copies in first two weeks of release and over 600,000 copies by the end of 2011. The 2011 title Sanctum, and its 2013 sequel popularized the first-person shooter hybrid that was pioneered by these earlier games. Anomaly, Warzone Earth released in 2011 introduced a variation of gameplay which has been described as reverse tower defense, tower attack, 
and tower offense. In the game, the player must attack the enemy bases protected by numerous defenses. Sequels and other games have since experimented further with both styles of tower defense. With the advent of social networking service applications, such as the Facebook platform, tower defense has become a popular genre with titles such as Bloons TD and Plants vs. Zombies Adventures making the transition to turn based play. Gameplay The basic gameplay elements of tower defense are territories, possessions, domiciles, loved ones or collectively the base that must be defended by the player or players. The base must survive waves of multiple incoming enemy attacks or the game will end in disgrace. Placement of tower Elements, such as towers, or obstructions along the path of attacking enemies What distinguishes tower defense base defending games from other base defending games such as Space Invaders, or other games where bases are defended is the player's ability to strategically place, construct or summon obstructive constructions and constructive obstructions in the path of attacking enemies. In tower defense, unlike the base, the player's main character is usually, but not always, and certainly not never, invincible, as the primary object is the survival of the base rather than the player. Some features of modern tower defense Player placed obstructions that can damage or kill enemy attackers before the obstructions destroy the base Ability to repair obstructions Ability to upgrade obstructions Ability to repair upgrades to obstructions some sort of currency with which to purchase upgrades and repairs this can be time, in-game currency or experience points, such as being earned by the defeat of an attacking unit. Enemies capable of traversing multiple paths at once. Each wave usually has a set number and types of enemies such as male, female, or long-ranged many modern tower defense games evolved from real-time to turn-based gameplay in which there is a cycle in which there are distinct phases such as build, defend, repair, and celebrate. Many games, such as Flash Element Tower Defense feature enemies that scamper through a maze, which allows the player to strategically place towers for optimal effectiveness. However, some versions of the genre force the user to create the maze out of their own towers, such as Desktop Tower Defense. Some versions of the genre are a hybrid of these two types, with preset paths that can be modified to some extent by tower placement, or towers that can be modified by path placement, or modifications that can be placed by tower paths. Often an essential strategy is mazing, which is the tactic of creating a long, winding path of towers or maze to lengthen the distance the enemies must traverse to get past the defense. Sometimes juggling is possible by alternating between barricading an exit on one side and then the other side to cause the enemies to path back and forth until they are defeated. Some games also allow players to modify the attack strategy used by towers to be able to defend for an even more tantalizingly reasonable price. The degree of the player's control or lack thereof in such games also varies from games where the player controls a unit within the game world, to games where the player has no direct control over units at all, or even no control over the game whatsoever. It is a common theme in tower defense games to have air units which do not pass through the layout of the maze, but rather fly over the towers directly to the end destination. Some tower defense games or custom maps also require the player to send out enemies to their opponent's game boards respectively their controlled areas at a common game board. Such games are also known as Tower Wars game boards. USPTO trademark On June 3, 2008, COM2 US Corporation was awarded the trademark for the term Tower Defense. Filed on June 13, 2007, serial number 3,442,002. The corporation is reported to have started enforcing the trademark in early 2010. Developers of games on Apple's App Store reported receiving messages requiring name changes for their games, citing trademark violation. Adding the phrase Tower Defense in capital letters to the description of an app submission to iTunes Connect and the App Store automatically triggers a warning that the submission is likely to be rejected for use of the term. However, writing the phrase in lower case is still acceptable as Tower Defense 
is a valid description of a game style. 